Hey everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Kylie and today we're going to do a book review. <clears throat> I read Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Um, Heartless is a um, origin story for the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. I always want to say Red Queen. Like, I guess that's kind of still right, but the Queen of Hearts. <laughs> you know, off with your head, that whole thing. Yeah, so that's her. Um, the setting is in the Kingdom of Hearts. Um, in, is it in Wonderland, I guess? Like, you have all sorts of, like, crazy characters. You have, like, turtles and hares and mad hatters and, like, almost all the characters from the movie that I remember. Um, and it's super cute. And I really love the setting and the effort that Marissa Meyer went to to create a beautiful, like, whimsical, magical um, setting for this to take place in. Um, I'm going to talk about characters first. This is a character-driven novel. Obviously, it's an origin story. Um, it's hard, though. I'm just going to talk about the two main characters in just a little bit because... But it's hard because there are so many characters that played a significant role in how everything played out in the end. And... So, but it's really hard. Like, I'm not going to talk about 10 different characters. So, um, but our main character who ends up being the Queen of Hearts um, is Catherine. Um, she's a happy, dream-filled young girl. She kind of doesn't really have a care, like, at the beginning. Um, she wants to open a bakery. Her passion is baking. She loves to bake, every and she takes puts so much effort into it. Um... It was kind of impossible not to fall in love with Catherine. She's really good, just like in her heart, and she's super smart. Um, she comes from nobility. Um, I don't really understand like the different. See, this is the second time for the the Beast book. I was talking about like they said he's a courtier, courtique. It's like court and then I E R, I think, or something at the end. But now, like in this one. Her parents, her mother is a Marquess, and her father, yeah, and their father is the male version of that. Like, I don't understand. There's some sort of nobility, and they, they do things like they have arranged marriages. She, they, they talked about, like, a dowry. Like, the family has money. They have, like, hired help and stuff. Um, okay, so that's kind of, like, Catherine, like, summary. And then her love interest is Jest who is the castle joker. Um, he is so sweet and kind and clever and magical. Um, and I really love like their banter. I love them together. Um, they're so cute. Yeah. Okay. So the plot summary. So Catherine has this love for baking and she has a dream to open up a bakery with her best friend, Marianne, who's also like one of the hired help like in her household um yeah so that's something that's not really done like she's got her work cut out for her with that um dream in her head pretty quick to the beginning here we find out that the king of hearts who is a weird goofy little man <laughs> That he is, like, interested in Catherine romantically, and he wants her to be his queen. Um, she is kind of, like, like super off-put by that, like, not interested. Then, after we find out that, literally, like, the next scene later, she meets Jess for the first time. Okay, so then this origin story follows Catherine. We really get to know her. We follow her as she gets to know Jess and has a romance with him. All the while trying to procrastinate her like courtship and relationship with the king um, and she's trying to take steps to make this bakery thing actually happen and basically she's trying to figure out how she can get what she wants while keeping everybody happy <laughs> and 
I mean, we know what she's like in Alice in Wonderland, so. All right, so yeah, mostly character driven, but I will say that events that happen in the plot, they kind of seem insignificant until everything gets wrapped together at the end. Um, okay, things I liked. I really liked the romance with Catherine and Jess. I think it developed um, normally and realistically over time, and I really loved their banter together. Um, the setting was really well done. I, I thought it was super cute. I loved like the tea party and just the little interactions. The Cheshire cat is is um, in this novel and I think I thought he was really well done. Um, yeah, I just thought the whole setting was so cute and I really loved it. Um, I did, li I like this, it was frustrating, but I liked that Catherine's indecision and her like internal debate that she had, um, I thought that it was realistic, even though it was frustrating. You kind of were just like, but just, just do this or just do this and uh just come on but like no <laughs> she couldn't she wanted to make everybody happy and it was hard yeah um so things i disliked was okay so this isn't really a spoiler we're discovering how we get wonderful um dream filled good to the core happy catherine and we end over here with crazy bitch off with your head red queen okay so we know that something's going to happen and she's going to be end up being evil red queen but i thought that the ending was rushed and i thought that the move from good to bad was it was it just happened too fast and i i felt like that the author could have added more transition <laughs> i i don't know i thought it was really unrealistic and i actually didn't buy it i was like well, like really like it's we're, we're like only a few pages and we've gone from still our Catherine that we love and then all of a sudden she's just like bitch uh yeah I didn't I just didn't buy that I I mean I knew that we had to get there um but I feel like yeah I feel like it wasn't as done done as well as it could have been and then uh, the last thing that I really disliked was um Catherine's parents just in general um they're what you would expect expect of nobility they're kind of you know the whole time they're they love that the king is obsessed with her and they really want her to be queen um and they kind of don't seem to care at all what she wants until it's too late and so that was super frustrating and I'm just I'm getting a little bit tired of like bad parents um, in novels. It's, it's a, is it, would it be considered like a trope? It's like, I feel like it's in every novel. I was talking with Zoe about this. Like, why is every mom like this evil bitch who's like the worst to her kids? Like, I feel like that's the exception, not the rule, but in literature, a lot of times it's the rule where you more often than not have terrible parents written in literature and you don't have you know, like the people don't have like a good support system and you kind of have to like overcome your shitty parents I really really like to see um, some novels with some good supportive parents to their children <laughs> I'm a mom and I'm a good mom okay oh that's all I wrote okay um, that's all I wrote. <laughs> that's all my notes. In conclusion, <laughs> I still really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I gave it five stars on Goodreads, I think, but after like sitting back and like letting it soak in 
and thinking about it, you know, analyzing it, making my notes for this review, um, I think I would retract a star. I think it would be like a solid four star read, but I don't think it quite makes it to a five star for me. So if you've read this, uh, let me know what you thought down below. Um, I always struggle with ending the video. I feel like I need to script it every single time. <laughs> All right, like and subscribe to see more from me. And that's all I have for you today. Bye.